everybody and welcome to Crafting Live. Um, we're really pleased to be able to join you still, even though it's a little bit different this year. Um, but we've had all your questions in and we're going to go through a little bit of a question and answer session for you. Um, myself, Amanda and lovely Lily. Hello, so everybody. we've got paper craft questions and rare earth stamping. So we're going to try between the two of us, we might be able to get through these for you. So number one. What's the best plate combination on a Kit and Caboodle Pro if I wanted to cut fabric? Well, for us, when we're doing our normal cutting, we have our um, uh, magnetic shimmin there for holding our stamps, so our dies in place. Yeah. So if you take away your actual uh, magnetic shim and replace it with your metal shim, that should cut it perfectly. If you have it, so it's um, your three mil, um, your die, so your die is facing up, your fabric, your metal plate, and then your five mil. So you're cutting still into that five mil plate mm -hmm. and then send it through your machine. It should be perfect. Yeah, what you'll find is you'll be cutting metal into metal. So it'll sort of help with the pressure nice, of cutting crisp fabric. Edge. Yeah, it'd be like a hot knife through butter, cut beautifully. So it's perfect. You can use your pro cut if you are a fabric crafter as well as a paper crafter. Absolutely. Not just for paper crafts, your pro cut. So it's brilliant for everyone. So the next question is, which is the best adhesive for sticking down rice papers? So we've got two glues here. So we've got the Fabric Decoupage Glue and the Decoupage Plus. So the Fabric Decoupage Glue goes onto all your fabric surfaces. But what we need to remember to do is heat set this from the back. So this makes it fully washable. And then we've got the um, Decoupage Plus Glue, which goes on all to your hard surfaces. Um, we just need to make sure that when we've got the rice paper set down in place that we give it a coat over the top and this acts as a sealant so this can go outdoor and indoor as well. I think it's it's a really good question as well to ask about the decoupage glues and mm -hmm. how to adhere rice papers because if you go on Create and Craft and you tap in glue there's hundreds there's thousands, of glues, yeah. there's like there's pin flare, there's PVA, mm -hmm. we've got decoupage glue, we've got so many different types of glues yeah. on there and they're all designed for individual projects, so it's good to have the ones that will fit to the best Yeah, it can be a results. bit overwhelming with all the different sort yeah. of wet mediums, but having two glues, so one goes on fabric and one goes on all your hard surfaces, makes it really easy for yeah. your craft. Definitely, and when you've, if you've printed onto your sumi paper and you're popping it with your decoupage glue onto fabric, mm -hmm. like Elizabeth said, coat over it and it gives yeah. you a really good seal, doesn't it? You need to it? make sure that all the edges of the um, rice paper are sealed in, so if you've got like the fibres where you've got that watery teared edge, we need to make sure that we've got that permanent adhesion down there, so give it a good seal, working from the inside of the rice paper outwards, so we're brushing down and we're sealing all them fibres down onto that surface that we need to. And then again, heat setting it from the back. It's really important if you're wanting to wash your designs that we heat set this from the back of the reverse of the fabric, making sure that the iron is hot enough for suitable for that certain fabric that you're working on. Um, what do I need to make a shaker card style? Hopefully. I must say I love a shaker card. They are absolutely brilliant. They add so much interest to your product. Yeah, they do. They're so exciting, it's got to be said. So, first of all, you need something to actually put in your shaker. So, whether it be sequins, glitter, glitter or even <laughs> little, little die cuts you've got. If you've got like little star dies or the mm. dropout pieces from Absolutely. a lacy die, are perfect. So, what would be waste, as they call it, not that there's waste because we're crafters, you can be popping that into your shaker cards. You're going to need some sort of frame that's actually going to sort of contain it into place, and you're going to need acetate behind that as well. So, something that's going to allow you to see through into your shaker and then around the edge of your frame you are going to need some sort of foam tape and that's going to need to be a continuous strip you don't want any gaps in there because otherwise you're going to have a leaky shaker and there is nothing worse than a leaky shaker <laughs> no, let no, me tell no. you <laughs> so make sure you've got your acetate you've got some sort of frame with your foam tape you've got something to pop in your shaker and you are good to go so we've also had another question about paint and cadence when it comes to paint of course they're like scientists of paint yes. they've created so many different formulas so many different yeah. blends of paint and there really is a lot to choose from but they're all designed to specific projects and the question that we've had is what's the difference between metallic paints dora metallics and the hybrid acrylics now if i just show you this actually just to give you a bit of an insight as to how much there is so <laughs> i don't even think this will fit across the table <laughs> but this here you can probably see me behind it. This is double sided and this doesn't even have all of Cadence's products on there. That's absolutely huge. But what that does have is lots of information. And so you can see here, we've got some paints, different paints. And this is a hybrid acrylic. 
Yes, I've got a hybrid acrylic and we've got a Dora Metallic. Now, these two paints have very different properties to them, but also will give you different results for different projects. So, your Dora Metallics, they are great for putting onto hard surfaces like mm -hmm. cardstock, paper. You can, you can put them onto fabric as well, but the Dora Metallics, as your standard ones, aren't washable, whereas your hybrids are. So, each time you see a Cadence product that's got the word hybrid in it, that way you know that it's versatile to be able to work on every surface. Yeah, every surface you can think of. Yes, think. and be washable. So if I take a bit of the Dora Metallic here and just show you, take the lid off, you can actually see as it comes out of the pot and you spread it, how well it covers. But the thing with your Dora Metallics is they're actually filled with metal flakes and that's where you get something called the Dora Flash. So you might be able to see it there as it flashes through. It's filled with thousands of little mm -hmm. metal flakes. And your hybrid acrylic has a special bonding in it. So you may have used acrylic paints. I used to use them all the time, different acrylics. Mm -hmm. um, but with your hybrid acrylics, they actually have a bonding in them that adheres to all of those surfaces. So like your decoupage glues, if you're using it onto fabric and you heat set it from the reverse, it's then permanent and will stay there. So with your hybrid acrylics, this is white going onto black cardstock. So if I load up my brush there, you can just see the coverage on there, they're so thickly pigmented, they it's just block only out. One coat, isn't it? It's, it's one brilliant. coat every time, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But part of the Dora family, it has a hybrid in there as well. So you've got your Dora, Dora Metallic here, which is your standard Dora Metallic. But of course, you then have your Dora Hybrid Metallic. So you've got two different paints for two different projects. So you can choose between the two. You can choose to pop one on fabrics or outdoor weatherproof surfaces, or you can then go for a hybrid metallic, and that's not part of the Dora family, but it's part of the hybrid acrylic range. So this is an acrylic-based paint, but has a metallic running through it. But the Doras have the Dora Flash in there, so that's mm -hmm. got all the metal flakes. So there's different products for different results, but it's it's good to know what the different ones do, because we yeah. use them all the time, don't we? Oh, all the time. And another good point to mention with the Doras is um, to get more of the flakes to come up, so using the um, cut and use sponge and using the pouncing technique, that will bring up the metal flakes to the top of the paint surface, so you do get more of that dull yeah. flash. Yeah, it'll bring it like ruffles all the flakes, doesn't yeah, it? And so you can see more of that shimmer and shine. Um, yeah. And that's the same with the hybrid metallic as well. So, and you can also water the paints down and get that lovely watercolor wash look, so you can still get that like yeah. iridescent flash that you can that's, get. That's one thing that we always say about Cadence is that. When you've got something that's so durable and versatile mm -hmm. and a really tough product that can go on everything, it can be treated as a watercolour paint, yeah. which I just find amazing. I the love fact using that you them can... as watercolour washes exactly. over black and you get that lovely shimmer from the paints and the hybrid yeah. acrylic. You can use them neat, turn them down. You can add um, paint so easily to them and get so many different shades and different variety of colours just from one bottle of paint. Exactly. I think that's amazing. Yeah, I think Cadence actually do over 81 shades of their hybrid acrylics. Mm -hmm. So there's tons to work with. That's like quadrupled when you mix it with all like your different whites exactly. and your blacks. Think of all the shades. All water-based, <laughs> all intermixable. So it's good to know about the Dora family, the metallic family and the hybrid family as well from Cadence. <laughs> there is tons to work with. So again, number four. I like the look of the Tattered Lace Memories paper pack, but unsure of where I could start with them. Are they just for scrapbooking? <gasps> Absolutely not. No. no, 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 no way. It's for all of your paper crafting, it's for home decor, and it's for memory books, not just scrapbooking. Okay, so you can actually create your, your foundation of your memory books because they're beautiful double-sided sheets. Make, make, the, make your book from the actual... Um, paper pack but also use it as your car crafting there's nothing mm. stopping you using it as your Absolutely car crafting not. especially if you're doing the techniques where you're wanting to fold it back if you fold your card back and use a braddle or even rolling it back almost like a scroll then you're still getting to use and see both double-sided pieces of your cardstock so it's absolutely not just for scrapbooking it's for everything and it is beautiful and it's not coated so mm -hmm. stamp on it as well yeah it definitely it, stamp on it yeah Tear use it, it don't emboss it die cut it absolutely everything. everything just because i know it says it's scrapbooking but also think of it just as a 12 by 12 double-sided paper pack and yeah. what would you do with your paper stash that you've got at home? Yeah, I definitely say just think of it as a nice big size paper pack. With it being a little bit bigger, all it means is you've got a little bit more to play with. Yeah. And if you make six by six cards, just think of it as four card fronts for six by six cards. It's brilliant. Absolutely. 
I've got to say I love them. And it's so much fun when we have the memories, paper pads coming. The team have so much fun. Yeah, we We've love them. David and Elizabeth on the sort of mixed media side, so they're doing home decor, all sorts of stuff. Then we've got our creative team that are doing cards. We're doing scrapbook pages. So it's really interesting to see all the different team members take on it. Certainly not just for scrapbooking, whatever your style, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. Yeah, you're going to love them. Yeah. What's the best products to use to create a crackle effect? Crackle effect. So, this is my best friend when we come to crackle Literally effects. Literally best friend. <laughs> there is multiple crackle effects from Cadence, actually. So it's a really good question because choosing which crackle to get yes. is just, it's really dependent on what result you're after. Mm -hmm. So this is my favourite one and this is the one step Cadence crackle and it's, purely because it's really easy to use. Yeah, this is the, probably the most simplest one with it's yeah. just the one step and it's a really quick result. Exactly, and it really does create exactly the effect that you see on the bottle there. And what you would do with this is you can use, for example, your hybrid acrylics. So you would paint down one layer of hybrid acrylic in whatever colour you want. So for example, say you were to go with uh, white first, you then let that dry and take your crackle effect and paint that over the acrylic. Mm -hmm. um, and then once that's dry, you want to give it around about half an hour to dry, or if you pop it on the windowsill in the sun, it will dry much quicker. Mm -hmm. And then you go back o over it with an opposite color. So then you could go over it with maybe a black, and then instantly the black will start to crack and show the white underneath coming through. So it's a one step process because mm -hmm. you don't need multiple blends of crackle to actually work with it. But there is others uh, that Cadence do do in two steps that create a much thicker crackle effect. Yeah. So the thicker that you apply the crackle effect between step one and two will depend on how intense you want the crackle as well. Yeah. And it's important as well when you're applying your hybrid acrylics to make sure that you've got an intense contrast of colour such as like white and black or like cream and brown yeah. so you've got that intense um, contrast between the colours so you can really get that crackle effect and then adding your waxes on there, your distressing paste, you can really take it anywhere you want exactly. to depending on what product that you're wanting to create that crackle on. And finally, um, the question that we've got because we've got many questions, we've had to really squeeze them down for now, um, is the, what's the best way to cut stamps out? When I fussy cut, they never look perfect or the card bends as I'm cutting. So this, this Liz, 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 Lily loves fussy cutting. It's a favourite thing to do. I'm quite well known in the creative team for being a little bit obsessed with uh, <laughs> fussy cutting. Just a little bit. <laughs> little bit. <laughs> so I love fussy cutting, and I must say it's one of those things that it's practice. The more you do it, the more confident you'll get and the neater your fussy cutting will get. A few tips though is when you are fussy cutting, make sure you are moving your cardstock rather than your scissors. That'll give you a smoother uh, edge to it. Also have your scissors at a slight angle. So don't have them straight. If you cut at a slight angle, it'll give you that need to finish as well. But just practice, just be careful. Um, we're saying that the card is bending slightly as I'm cutting. Just be careful the way you're holding your card and that should help with that. But if you are really struggling with your fussy cutting, we have got a little cheat that you can use. With our rare earth stamps, you are allowed to scan them in to the scan and cut and let the scan and cut cut them out for you. Yes, yeah, so if you want a really perfect effect, we can be doing that as well. I know you are a bit of a queen of the scan and cut. <laughs> so I know you, Amanda's eyes, were going to light up then when I said the word scan and cut. So you can be scanning them into your scan and cut and doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So that, that's, that is cheating. That's cheating. That's not fussy cutting. Shh. That's cheating. But yeah, we do we do like the fussy cutting and I'm not I've I've been quite new to the fussy cutting solely because I have become reliant on my scan and cut, as Lydia says. I scan everything in and cut it all out and let the machine do it for me. Which you would if you've got one. But what I've also followed Lily's tips. I've been practicing because I was getting the white edges and I was I was it looked like a five year old had gone round with a pair of scissors. Now, just after just practicing and really taking, take your time. Mm. Don't rush it, try and make it part of your crafting and actually enjoy yeah. doing the fussy cutting. And if you take your time and slow down with it and make it part of that crafting experience, that's where I've improved personally and it's helped a lot. But one of the biggest tips that Lily gave me was the angle of your scissors. Angle your scissors almost as if it's, um, been cut with a die yes so yeah. the die cut so it leaves a nice smooth edge smooth and edge. by angling your scissors you don't get that horrible white line yeah 
Yeah, and the way I tend to fussy cut is I tend to leave a couple of mils of, of a white border around the edge if I'm fussy cutting out a stamped image, rather than going right up to the stamp line. I give it that little border and I think that gives it a really nice... Makes it pop. Yeah, really nice touch to it. Because you see a lot of dyes when they cut out stamped images, that's tend to be the way that they work, give it a little border. Border. And I find that easier. So that's another little, little cheat that you can have a go at. So I hope we've given you some inspiration and answered your relevant questions. I'm sorry we're a little bit tight on time for this one, but please, please keep sending in your questions. And when we get, we'll definitely get round to either answering them on um, social media or we'll do another one of these for you. But we're really pleased that we've been able to do this for you. Yeah, and brilliant. we hope you have a fabulous time with the Crafting Live. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Bye.